let's take this new equation for a spin, the one that relates our uh, pressure-based equilibrium constant to an equilibrium constant determined in terms of moles that we might calculate from partition functions. So if we stick with our favorite reaction for the moment, two bromine atoms dimerizing to form a bromine molecule, if that's happening in the gas phase, then we might want to use that reaction. Um, we might want to describe the amounts of those products in terms of the pressures of bromine atoms and pressures of Br2 gas. Uh, so we'd like to be able to use Kp. We do know that for the specific case of this reaction, when we're at 298 Kelvin, the equilibrium constant is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the 7th liters times 1 over the volume. So if we were doing that in a volume of one liter, then the one over one liter would cancel these units of liter, and that would be our equilibrium constant. But for now, I've written this in general. Uh, so as long as we're at 298 Kelvin, doesn't matter what the volume is, we can compute what the equilibrium constant is with this expression. So if we want to know what Kp is equal to, this expression tells us that's going to be Kt over V raised to this difference in stoichiometric coefficients. When I turn two atoms of bromine into one molecule of Br2, I've lost, I've turned two uh, gas species into one gas species, so I've lost one um, species in the gas phase. So I've, my stoichiometric coefficient is negative one. I've lost one molecule. So Kp is Kt over V to the negative one times Kn, or V over Kt times Kn. But Kn is this quantity, 1.6 times 10 to the seventh liters times 1 over V. So now, very conveniently, the volume in this conversion ratio cancels the volume in the Kn. And there's no more volume dependence left in Kp. So that's actually very convenient. Kp is not a volume dependent quantity. It will depend on temperature, both because this number depends on temperature as well as the extra factor of temperature that arises here. For this specific example of doing the problem at 298 Kelvin, I can calculate Kp as this Kn divided by Boltzmann's constant. And also divided by the temperature. So the Kelvin units will cancel. Kelvin cancels Kelvin. But I've got a liters on top and a joules in the denominator. Those don't cancel. And we won't really understand what that's talking about until I convert units of joules into units of liter atmospheres. So I'll at least get some partial cancellation. So now these joules will cancel these joules. These liters will cancel these liters. I can do the arithmetic and calculate the value of this equilibrium constant is 3.9 times 10 to the 29th. The units that I have left over is per atmosphere. And that makes sense, as we'll see in just a second, because the equilibrium constant written in terms of pressures will be a ratio of pressures over pressures that has more pressures in the denominator than in the numerator. So that's how we obtain a value for the equilibrium constant written in terms of uh, pressures. How do we use that equilibrium constant? We can work an example. And just to see how it works, we'll use the same example that we've used previously for this Br forming Br2 reaction. Let's suppose that initially, again at 298 Kelvin, initially we have a mole of Br2 and no Br atoms. And I'll give you those initial conditions just so we're sure that it matches the problem we've solved previously. What we're interested in to solve a problem with a Kp is what is the initial pressure of, of Br2. So if the bromine is acting like an ideal gas, we would say that's uh, N Kt over V. So we'll skip the details of the ideal gas calculation, but one mole times gas constant times 298 Kelvin um, divided by uh, volume, and let's go ahead and say 
now we'll say we're doing this in a volume of one liter, then the pressure is going to work out to 24 and a half atmospheres. So our initial pressure, I've got a one liter box into which I've put 24.5 atmospheres uh, worth of compressed Br2 gas and no Br atoms initially. And the question will be how much Br does we form in equilibrium after this reaction shifts backwards a little bit. So the equilibrium expression that we're going to need to plug into is going to involve pressure of Br2 and pressure of Br at equilibrium. Pressure of uh, Br2 is going to be, I can think of that as moles of Br2 times RT over V. At equilibrium, just like we've seen previously, the moles of Br2 is going to be the initial amount of Br2 plus the extent of reaction. If I start out with some moles of Br2 and the reaction proceeds some number of times, I've gained that many moles of Br2. Let me, let me keep writing these as Kt over V, just for consistency. So I could think of that as N naught Br2 Kt over V plus extent of reaction Kt over V. Where remember, extent of reaction is the number of times or the number of moles of times the reaction has proceeded. This quantity, N naught Br2 Kt over V, that's exactly what I calculated here. That's the initial pressure of Br2. Squiggle Kt over V. That's some number of moles of times the reaction is proceeded times Kt over V. That's going to be in units of pressure. Let me go ahead and label that quantity extent of reaction times Kt over V. That's just converting extent of reaction in moles into extent of reaction as a pressure. So I'll call, I'll give that a different variable, lambda. Lambda is the amount by which the uh, pressure has increased due to this much um, extent of reaction. So instead of saying moles is initial moles plus extent of reaction, now I've said pressure is initial pressure plus extent of reaction just written in terms of, of pressures instead of moles. Likewise, the pressure of Br is going to be the initial amount minus twice the extent of reaction. Uh, sorry, Kt on top. V on the bottom, so since squiggle kt over v is equal to lambda, I'll write that as minus 2 lambda. So the rest of the problem is going to seem very similar to the way it worked when we did it in terms of moles, but now we're just working in terms of pressures instead. So I'll say the equilibrium constant is the amount of products divided by the amount of reactants, so pressure of Br2 divided by pressure of Br squared products divided by reactants raised to stoichiometric coefficients. With the work I've done in the previous lines, I can write these pressure of Br2 as initial pressure plus lambda. Pressure of Br atoms is negative 2 lambda. When I square it, that becomes 4 lambda squared. And now that expression looks familiar. We had something very much like that written in terms of moles and squiggle rather than pressures and lambdas. So the solution to that problem is again going to be a quadratic equation, the exact same quadratic equation we saw previously. Lambda is going to turn out to be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 4 kp initial pressure over 8 k, kp in this case. So. Algebra is exactly the same as previously. The difference is the numbers we're plugging in. For Kp, we're plugging in 3.9 times 10 to the 29th per atmosphere. Notice the per atmosphere in Kp is going to cancel the P0, the initial pressure, 24 and a half atmospheres. But if I plug in 3.9 times 10 to the 29th per atmosphere, 24 and a half atmospheres, and also plug in Kp down here, I get two solutions. The two solutions I obtain are either positive or negative 10 to the 15th 
uh, 10 to the minus 15th atmospheres. And I haven't written the positive solution because that's the one that is non-physical. The, the lambda, the extent of reaction written as a pressure, is negative 4 times 10 to the minus 15th atmospheres. So what that means is the amount of Br2, initial pressure plus that amount, so 24 and a half atmospheres plus this ridiculously small number of atmospheres, that's still 24 and a half atmospheres. The pressure of Br, pressure of Br is negative 2 times this extent of reaction in units of atmosphere, so negative 2 times that is equal to 8 times 10 to the minus 15 atmospheres. Just to make sure we like that number, that's the same result as we've gotten previously. If I convert that to moles using, for example, uh, moles is PV divided by RT. If I do the ideal gas calculation and convert this many atmospheres at 2 to 8, 8 Kelvin in a volume of 1 liter into moles, what I find is, not surprisingly perhaps, bromine atoms with this pressure in a 1 liter volume at 298 Kelvin, uh, is that amount of pressure is generated by 3.2 times 10 to the minus 16th moles of Br atoms. So that is exactly the same answer that we got when we solved the equilibrium problem in terms of moles. Oh, actually, when we solved it in terms of molecules and converted to moles. So that shows us that using Kp works just fine. If we would rather solve an equilibrium problem in terms of pressures rather than moles, we can do that. Uh, and now we know how to convert back and forth between equilibrium constants in terms of molecules, in terms of moles, and in terms of pressures. There's one more complication to consider. The problem we've just done has assumed constant volume. I used one liter of volume uh, both at the start of the problem and at equilibrium, so we assumed the volume was not changing. Things work out a little bit differently when the volume is constant than when the pressure is constant, so that's a complication we need to consider also.